Hi, I'm Ayal and I'm from Videolink. Videolink is a new way to deliver live video to social media platforms. We are offering the ability to insert closed captioning to your streams. Uh, we have a custom player that you can design and post anywhere. We are allowing to insert uh, third-party advertising, uh, for example from Google DFP. We have an API and of course statistics to be able to uh, read and see what your viewers are doing. The platform is simple. It uh, allows people without experience as well as experienced broadcasters use different type of sources for their video. They can use an RTMP uh, stream coming from software or hardware encoders. Uh, they can use a webcam and they can point to another live stream in a form of an RTMP, RTSP or HLS or to just point to a file and simulate a live broadcast. The destinations that we support varies. They include uh, the leading social media platforms like Facebook and YouTube, Twitter and Twitch, as well as uh, professional streaming service providers like Kaltura, Verizon, Limelight and so on. And we allow customers to stream into multiple destinations, uh, saving them the cost of buying multiple encoders or using bandwidth from locations that are limited with that. Our custom player can point either to Videolink as a CDN, as well as to any third party streaming service provider that support HLS. And today I'm gonna to show you how to use Videolink to insert real-time closed captioning into your stream and to send it into Facebook, YouTube and Twitch. We support video coming from traditional video encoders, uh, for example, hardware encoders like Teradek, uh, software encoders like OBS, Wirecast, Vimix. And then the closed captioning can be inserted separately from the video. And this is a unique feature to Videolink. You could use your broadcasting closed captioning hardware, the same hardware that you use to broadcast to traditional uh, OTT or live television or cable. Uh, you can extract these closed captioning uh, using uh, software or hardware. Uh, we, we have partnership and we support uh, hardware closed captioning decoders from EEG, uh, from Everts, and we also support software um, closed captioning insertion by third party uh, stenograph operators. Uh, for example, you could use voice interaction, you could use telestream captions, and you could use, of course, one cup up. The closed captioning and the video, they have to be inserted at the same time to Videolink. And what Videolink does is receive the RTMP video, receive the data from the closed captioning, sync it, and then get it ready to push it to social media. And I will de demonstrate right now how it's done. First thing to do is to enable an RTMP encoder inside the console. When you do that, you receive an RTMP pass and a stream key. So you would copy these two values into your RTMP encoder. For demonstration purposes, I have here a Windows computer running with Adobe Flash Media Live encoder. And I already pasted here the RTMP path and the stream key. Once I connect my FMLE encoder to video link, the video is gonna show on the video link console. The next step is to take the closed captioning credentials that we generate and to copy and paste them into the closed captioning client that is transmitting the video, the, the data into video link. So I took already the stream key and I put it inside a simulator that we have. That's our own VLCAP. Uh, it's a desktop executable file that extracts data closed captioning data from an EEG machine. And here I put my stream key and my password. And what it does, it basically takes that data 
points to video link and begins pushing it. Once I push the data, it will be immediately visible on the video link player and an indication of that will show up on the upper right corner. I can go and enable, I'm using the English language, but it supports any Latin characters. And once I do it, you're going to notice that in here, the closed captioning is already in the video. My next step is to configure where I want the video to go. And I selected for that Facebook, YouTube, and I'm going to head also Twitch. For the purpose of configuring Facebook, I created a manual live stream and I copied the stream key into my Facebook video link profile. You can see here the stream key. I did the same thing with YouTube. I copied the stream key. I'll do it again. And I activated it. And now I'll just go and connect into Twitch. And I'll use uh, a direct connection into Twitch by logging to Twitch. It will prompt me to select, this is a Twitch Direct, and I will be able to select, I mean, the East, US East. Let's say I'll pick up New York. The stream key was automatically assigned by Twitch, and we have the same type of, uh, the same type of connectivity into Facebook and YouTube as well, and to Twitter. So I save my settings, Twitch was added. Next step is to begin the transmission. I'm going live on video link. I have an indication that the stream is good. That means that the same type of video is going to be pushed into all the three. And I can either start them all or just push one by one. And go and check that the video with the captions is being transmitted. And this is Facebook. And I can see already the video and the captions is on Facebook. I'm going to go to YouTube. And I can see that YouTube is picking up the video. You always have to wait about 10 to 20 seconds until the second platform is going to capture the video and indicate that it has a good connectivity. And the last one would be Twitch, which also picked up the video. It shows that it's live. We give it some time. There might be sometimes connectivity issues between the different computers, but uh, they normally will catch up and be able to um, receive the video properly. You can see why they are not receiving it properly, because my source stream at the moment um, is not above 2 megabit per second, and that's what these platforms are expecting. They are expecting uh, at least 2 megabit per second and above and whenever that quality of video they are not receiving it uh, they will indicate it with these alerts and as well as here uh, Facebook is a bit more forgiving today uh, the reason that I don't get good video is because I'm running everything from my laptop uh, but if you would be operating on a separate encoder and not doing this kind of demonstration, you will get a much better result that I'm getting right now. And your transmission will be clean and visible properly. So to summarize, uh, you need the following, and I'll go back into the slide and explain it more in detail. So what you'll need to be able to create a live video and insert closed captioning into the stream is a media encoder. The media encoder can be either a hardware uh, encoder, rack mounted, or a desktop hardware encoder. Uh, the hardware encoder not necessarily needs to carry the closed captioning. And once the closed captioning uh, is coming from a separate uh, source, you will need one of the four 
uh, supported partners that we have. You'll have to be working with their equipment, their software, their hardware. Uh, let's start from EEG. EEG is known to have hardware, closed captioning decoders that you can connect with a USB or a serial cable to your computer. Have a client there that pushes data into ICAP. You could also use the EEG Falcon cloud service to send the closed captioning data into video link. Uh, if you are using Telestream Captions, uh, Telestream Captions uh, has a drop-down option where you can just point uh, to video link, copy and paste the credentials that we provide, and then send the data to video link directly point to point. Um, if you use uh, voice interaction, uh, within the voice interaction, uh, we are integrated with voice interaction and you will be able to select that you want to export the closed captioning data real time to go to video link. Uh, and send it to video link. And last is uh, one cup up. It's a cloud service uh, built by the hour. And uh, any stenograph operator will be able to get a subscription and point their equipment uh, either to your hardware closed captioning decoder, your everts, your EEG, your link electronic system, and to go to video link. So one cup app as well as EEG support two outputs of the data. Uh, both of them can send data into your traditional studio closed captioning decoder uh, to support your traditional broadcasting as well as send the data to video link where it's going to merge the video that comes as RTMP from your um, regular RTMP hardware or software encoder. Once the data reaches video link, uh, we merge the RTMP signal with the closed captioning data. We sync them and then we make it available. We make it available either to go to a social media platform like Facebook, YouTube, uh, Twitter, Twitch, or we make it available to go into, um, and here we go, uh, into services like Vimeo, uh, IBM, Ustream, Kaltura, uh, Verizon, Limelight, Terra Decor, and other CDNs. And in general, we can go to any RTMP capable media encoder, uh, decoder and server. Any service that accepts RTMP can receive video links, real-time video with real-time closed captioning. And then it will be up to the player to be able to see the uh, captions. Um, if you want to use the video link player, all you have to do is click on the player, copy the HLS path, and create a player. I created a player earlier for demonstration purposes. And what I did, I embedded basically the caption information inside here. Once you create the player, you can get a player embed code, put it on your website and the video will be instantly available with closed captioning on the player. Uh, I want also to indicate that our players accept playback from any third party content delivery network. Uh, if you send your video via RTMP to your content delivery network or video platform, you can point to the signal that is being served by that environment and play it on the video link player. This way the data that you are consuming is coming from that streaming service or CDN. So this, is, this concludes basically my presentation and I will be now uh, at our virtual booth and I will be waiting for your questions. If you have any questions, feel free to use the chat um, or to contact me directly. You can contact me at info at videolink.com. Thank you.